This is the Dr. Malika Clary Show. Dr. Malika has a background as a clinical psychologist, actress, director, model, and human rights activist. The Dr. Malika Clary Show will help move you towards bettering the quality of your life with positive psychology. So please welcome your host, Dr. Malika Clary. It was an interesting moment for me at the time because I really wasn't seeking someone or anyone, I should say. I just hoped if I did meet someone that they would be a positive person to meet. Everything he was saying and doing was making me fall in love with him. A lot of people quit going, that's just how it got to be. But she keeps on fighting, and it takes a lot of guts. Now, get this off me! You two are like two immature cartoon characters. Objection. Where is any of this evidence of this? Order! I'm sanctioning you for $15,000. I have a right to see my son. This is all about a child. A poor boy born into a battle. You're trying to have a judge removed. I'll sanction her for thousands of dollars for coming to court. Welcome to the Dr. Malika Clary Show on the Bold and Brave TV Network. We're coming live. (laughs) Welcome, fam. I'm so glad that God gave me another day, another week, and a weekend to come to be able to do this show. And, you know, it's always a pleasure. And when I see this um, trailer, the Three Corners of Deception movie. How about that, guys? It's coming out. <laughs> you know, and I have to say, I'm so grateful that we're looking for a screaming network. So I tell people and I urge, I know you guys want to know where the movie is right now. I don't know where the movie's going to be on, but we are looking at screaming platforms. Any screaming platforms that you're looking at, like um, Netflix or Hulu or Peacock or Prime Video, please keep on screaming and looking at those areas because one day we're going to be on one of them so and we're talking about two publicly 2023 how about that so you're going to keep on seeing three corners of deception movie and advertisement and stuff like that because you know i'm actually gonna allow this movie to be uh publicly and i say that because it's something that happened to me and it was just <sighs> i i have to breathe every time because i can't believe the stuff that i went through Um, in this movie. And I don't want to give everything out about the movie. I want you to see it. But one thing I have to say, whatever movie I put out there, it's something that it's for change, it's for survival, it's for something that you to take with you and to realize that no one's perfect, but there is things that we go through in, in the human flesh, but we are able to handle it. And I got through it. You know, all the obstacles that I had to fall through or go through during the making of Three Corners of Deception, I have to say that I I still completed it and it was a done deal. And I had a lot of obstacles. And I, you know what? I think we're going to talk about stuff like that today because I have to mention judicial deception and judicial, you know, issues or anything that I went through because that's one thing about my movie. We are also about mental illness awareness or mental health awareness every day but we're also also interested and to hear about the judicial system that's something that i go through or went through a lot of and i know of 
And the next guest that's on my um, show, her name is Attorney Kristen. Um, is, oh, you know, I always get her, you know, one day I, I get her name right. And then I, uh, uh, Cervic, yeah, Cervic, I'm sorry, Attorney Cervic, she's with me. She's been on my show numerous of times, but I, and you know, there's one time I'm, I'm very, you know, perfect with it. And then and sometimes I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> what did I say? I, I just love her very much. And she's so fruitful. And I have to say that because she's full with a lot of information, but she, you know, she went through a lot of things too, but she's like me. We're both human rights activists and we care about people. And today I believe what's important to talk about is about judicial deception or just a judicial system. If you get involved with the system and we are going to highlight on some important factors and, you know, it does correlate with your mental health as well, because if you can't get through the the system, the legal system, that can mentally mess you up. And I know it can because I've been through it. <laughs> this is not something that I'm just like, oh my goodness, you you don't you know this. It's not the fact that if I have law school experience or whatever legal degrees, I just don't think some of the stuff just sets you up that you are not going to be ready for the unbiased or the bias you know, things that I have went through and one could go through. So we're going to talk about some of these things. Now, there might be some things that we can't stop because one thing we can't do, we can't change people. People are going to have to want to change themselves. But we can tell you red flags, people. <laughs> be ready for the red flags. We can educate you in a way that you can be, you would know some more stuff about the judicial system and know things, what to do, what not to do. And I'm just going to shoot it all out there to um, Kristen Servet, attorney Kristen Servet. But until then, and right now, we are going to take a brief commercial, and we will be back with Attorney Kristen Cervic. Do not go nowhere, fam. We'll be right back. With the what if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back to the Dr. Malika Clary Show on the Bold and Brave TV Network. Welcome back, fam. And as I said before, we are going to get to some judicial stuff today. Yes, yes, we are. So come on in close while I welcome Kristen, Attorney Kristen Servak. Come on in, Kristen. How you doing, Hello. dear? Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing good, darling, and you looking marvelous as usual. Thank you. And I love you say getting close because I feel like we're going to spill some tea today or by the campfire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I know. I know. We are we are getting there today. You know, Kristen, we've been on this show and you know, we both have uh backgrounds in in the legal system. And we have known even that we're in this legal system or if you're practicing or you're helping, you know, either way, we have experience in the system. And, you know, one thing I have to say to people, and I, I have to say this about the movie, because I like to introduce this like this. It when I went to law school and I did a year, I think you you know that and I'm a paralegal course and I work with different lawyers. I don't have no issues with the legal like legal makers or judicial officers and as you be an attorney so let we can clear up that but here's the thing about it if you're a friend of somebody who's on the judicial side i don't think it's right for people to get their own bias in situations just because you can that's the problem you know me being married to somebody who was an attorney that doesn't matter if you're not together, you're just not together. It doesn't give you a right to get your sick your boys on me. I don't go and get my friends who's police officers because, you know, I got a bunch of them and say, go and arrest him on some download stuff. <laughs> now, and I say this is because these things happen to me. Now, are they right? No, they're not right. And I don't want people to misunderstood, you know, the situation that I, I have some vendetta against legal, you know, lawmakers or judicial officers. I don't. I just have a problem with individuals who use, who miss, who abuses their authority, their legal authority to hurt another person just because they can. Now, I may know this question, this answer, but what do you think about that? Because people like me, you say, you've been through it, but how do you fix somebody who has that kind of feeling? And not that I, I'm against anybody else, but I've been through it. And it's kind of hard to trust other people because of it. Well, absolutely. And, and just speaking of the system in general, uh, I support our system the way we have it. It is self-regulating in some ways. I mean, we do have uh, commissions and things people can go to to complain to, but those reports come from people that are experiencing it or other attorneys. So in, in essence, it is kind of a self-regulating process. But just like any system that has power over others, there is the risk that some people can misuse that. We've seen it in the news many, many times with uh, law enforcement, but doesn't mean every law enforcement officer is a bad apple or every experience with law enforcement is bad. No, we do hear about the experiences that people have where they felt mistreated or that there was a misabuse of, mis or abuse of power. And it's the same thing with the other side of the legal system in the courtroom. And I do have to be careful. So you're speaking of your experience and you personally experienced what you believe was not um, a judicial officer that was fully unbiased. And no one should discount your feeling and your experience um, or believe it to be not true if that is what you believe to have experienced. And there are countless other people that would say that and including attorneys such as myself mm -hmm. and others, because we are dealing with, as you like to say, humans. It's just because you put on a robe doesn't mean you stop being a human. And I have sat on the bench pro tem and it is a very difficult job and you have to, you know, follow the judicial code and put those things behind you. But just as there can be a bad apple in other areas, there can be here too. And the unfortunate thing is that even if a judge is not intentionally trying to do something, if they give the appearance of impropriety, the appearance that they are, people are going to feel like they don't have a fair shake. And that's what we want. You know, even if you don't get the result that you ideally want, you want to feel like you got a fair shake with this. And that's what people want. So if someone is crossing a line or you feel there's crossing a line, uh, ideally that wouldn't happen. But we've seen it you've seen it we've all seen it um it exactly. continues to happen because people are human and it's hard to take that element out you know what and you said it perfectly we're human and here's the thing when we're human, because i know a lot of people are watching and i'm hoping there's judges and lawyers and police officers and people who have authority and their power that are listening when you have people and it's a client or you're arguing on the opposite side you know, either way, 
being fair to others and put yourself in that situation sometimes does help. It's a, if you have a client and it happened to be a friend and your attorney, it doesn't mean that you're supposed to gang up. You're supposed to still maintain professionalism, no matter how you look at it. And that's the thing that I ran into. And I say this because this is part of public record. So anything that I say is public so you can validate it. I end up, you know, developing a whole crew of, of judicial officers that was upset because I wanted, I didn't like the decision because I didn't feel that it was favorable. Not that I needed to be always on my side, but I needed to make sense. To make sense, a ruling need to make sense. When you in court, you have a right to appeal. You have a right to appeal if you don't believe in a decision was great for you if you think that a judge did something wrong you have a right to appeal that is a right for any human birth person you have a right to take your your case appeal it to another court which is the appellate court and if they don't if that decision don't seem favorable then you can appeal to the supreme court these are the remedies of individuals including a civilian as myself. What I don't care for is that because we use these options, and I'm not sure if you've seen it, because this is a question for you. Have you seen that a officer, which is a judge, be biased toward a, 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 a person or a client or, you know, a, a person, you know, plaintiff, defendant, whatever the case may be, because they utilize those options. Appeal. Well, that, that's a tough one because that's going to be my opinion, right? Oh, oh so. wait a minute. You know what? Well, before you go there, oh, before fine. you go there, <laughs> we got to take a brief commercial. <laughs> so we got to come well, back with this. I, I, I got that red hair going now. Yeah. <laughs> so before we go there, we are going to take a brief commercial and we will be right back with the Dr. Malika Claire show on the Bold and Brave TV network. Do not go nowhere, fam. We are still with the attorney, Kristen Servet. Do not go nowhere. Mm -hmm. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away creating better health relationships careers and finances let shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness definitely something's happening uh it's like a, a flow inside you know it feels good whether in person or online shiraz provides personal coaching belief shifting visit shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back to the Dr. Malika Clary Show on the Bold and Brave TV Network. All right. Welcome back, fam. We had to take a brief commercial. I told you we're coming back. All right, Kristen, welcome back. And before we left, yes, you're welcome, my dear. Before we left, you was about to answer that question. 
that yes, you're pooping in the hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> I showed I got you cooking now. <laughs> right. Well, I've been doing this a long time, not just as an attorney, but even before an attorney before I was an attorney, I was still in the criminal justice system on many different areas as victim advocate, uh, investigations. I did all kinds of things. So uh, from that all the way to now, have I seen instances where I think that there has been a bias because somebody was trying to use a remedy? Uh, in my opinion, I think I have. Um, but at the same time, uh, I cannot get into the head or the mind of somebody else and say that is for sure what happened. Uh, if I did, and I knew that for a fact, then I would be obligated to report that to the disciplinary commission if there was something like that going on. So there are definitely times that, and I think a lot of other attorneys could say that we, su we suspect things, but at the same time, you know, I practice in a lot of courts, a lot of counties, a lot of judges. So this isn't something you can pinpoint to any particular area, county, court. But the majority of what I practice in, I feel that the judicial officers I work with, the attorneys I work with, are in it for the right reasons. They put their biases aside. It's, it's a rarity, but I absolutely have had cases and actually have some pending one, pending ones is actually kind of a public one. It's not a custody case, but it's something else. And they've been really public about it where uh, the parties strongly believe that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's hard for me to say, because I have to be careful. We are supposed to, you know, I believe in this system, I support the system, and I don't want people to go out there thinking that they shouldn't trust the legal process because they should, but they, Yes, I do believe that there are instances that I have experienced in cases where I went, really? <laughs> Is that what's really going exactly. on? Um, and, and some of it could be related to that questioning throughout the process. And, and you mentioned a process of remedy if you get a decision that you feel it's not a proper decision. So you've got multiple things. You can first go right back to the judge with the motion to correct errors, motion to reconsider, things like that, depending on what the issues are. And then if that doesn't work, then you can go to the appellate courts. And then if that doesn't get you to where you need to be, depending on the case, if it's the type of case the Supreme Court wants to hear, if it's generally, uh, it depends, you know, it's got to affect a lot of people in the public. It's a real pressing mm -hmm. type of issue publicly. Yeah. And, a lot of people, then you could, might get to the Supreme Court. But those remedies are there and they're there for a reason. But it is not the easiest thing because there's a lot of judicial discretion given when the appellate court is looking at that. And so anyone who has had a remedy given to them to by an appellate court, I can tell you it wasn't just fly by the night. I mean, there was really something strong going on when a court of appeals overturned some things or makes a court correct something, as as you know. Uh, and it's a validation in a lot of ways because there are a lot of cases where you really feel strongly that something needs to be overturned and it's not for various reasons. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'm glad you clarify that. I mean, these remedies and, and you're right. When it's something, if a appellate court overturned something, it was definitely something wrong. And I've had my situation overturned at least three times in my life here. I believe, let me see, maybe one, well, two, three, maybe about that time. I sure did. You know, I've seen success around the corner. <laughs> so, but I am going to, and I say this is because I don't want people to think that, you know, appeal is like a heinous thing. There is some judges I ran into that take it person, took it personal. Yeah. Frick, I, I have to say, I'm going to keep it real. I made a movie about it. Okay, because it wasn't right. And I felt like, you know, and I'm not gonna tell all the details, people, because you gotta go see the movie. And the movie was just unbelievable. I wrote the movie based on some of the events that I went through, but to go through what I went through was the hardest because I believe in the system as well. I, I mean, three of my, four of my degrees is in law. So why would I? Be against the system that I once part of time wanted to be a lawyer. So it's just like really what I believe in. But I tell you people, people can make you feel bad. And those people who have those titles could make you feel like the system is wrong. But that's not true. 
those people shouldn't be in power because those people abuse their power and they give bad names to good lawyers and good judges and good lawmakers or good police officers. And I say that because a lot of my colleagues are police officers. I went to school with them. Lots of lawyers who I've, I've known in Boston and stuff like that. I went to school with them. So I know, and I worked with a lot of lawyers. So I'm not saying that. It's just that when that bag egg hits you, you're really damaged. And that's the bad thing. But I am going to say to you, if a person is doing something like that, yeah, do not think appeal is the bad thing. Now, it's costly and it's time consuming because it's not an argument that you're going to do in a trial court. It's an oral. It's not oral. It's more like writing, you know, when you appeal. So that becomes very expensive. So people stray away. But if you're good writing, write it, do per se, because that's not against the law to do. You can do it. But I always recommend you got a lawyer friend or somebody could read, you know, read very well, have them proofread it before you go ahead and file it because you want all your I's dotted and your T's crossed. And I say that because I urge people to do things pro se too, because you may get a lot of no's before you get a yes. And why I say that? Because not everyone wants to appeal a judge. And I, you may want to say something. About, yeah, go ahead. You can say something about that because they it's not a good history of saying, I'm appeal you. Oh, right. then you better get ready for the repercussion. Right. And, and some people, well, no one likes to be questioned, right? Generally speaking. Yes, and it's kind right. of like, oh, well, judge, you know, my opinion was overturned. What I do? You know, it, it's not a good feeling, I'm, I would imagine. So... And then some people don't understand the appellate process and it is very difficult to navigate on your own. And I have encouraged some people to do that, to do that on their own, if it's something that they, you know, can't get an attorney involved with, but it is a remedy that's there, um, that should be used. But I actually forgot your question because it's that when you know someone wants to appeal, like if your client says, I don't like the decision and they want to appeal. And to me, when I hear different attorneys, at least from their experience, that you really don't want to appeal because the judge is really going to be mad at you because then it, the case may go back. And if you don't win, you're stuck in this court because it might be your county and they're going to treat you some way later on. So I've heard that from attorneys. I've heard that that they, they are already getting geared up, that you're right. not in a good position because you appealed. And, and that's unfortunate if that's the advice that's being given, yeah. because if they feel that strongly about that judge, maybe they should have asked yeah. for a different judge in the beginning. <laughs> you know, and you're right. I, and I'm going to get to that too. You know what? We are going to take a brief commercial. And we are going to come back with the Dr. Malika Clary show on the Bold and Brave TV Network. We will be right back. We got some answers for that. We'll be right back with Attorney Kristen. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality? But it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating. Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant. Like I had relief right away creating better health relationships careers and finances let shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness definitely something's happening uh it's like a, a flow inside you know it feels good whether in person or online shiraz provides personal coaching belief shifting visit shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Welcome back to the Dr. Malika Clary Show on the Bold and Brave TV Network. Well, we're coming live. Welcome back. We are still with the beautiful attorney, Kristen. Come on in here, girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's so pretty. So pretty. <laughs> I get the prettiest guests yes, on my show. I really do. <laughs> What'd you say, hon? Said, don't tell anybody she said that, and I won't listen when you tell them the same thing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm telling you. You know what? Before we went on break, we was getting into, you know, how the appellate court and all that works. And you were saying, yeah, if somebody's going to do something for judging you, you could appeal. But here's the thing, you know. And I think we were getting into it and going down that slope. If you're not happy with this judge and you feel that there is something, there is remedies, people. Now, of course, I know about those remedies. You can, if you feel that a judge is being really biased to you and your attorney is agreeing with you as well, your attorney can file a motion to recruit that judge and write all the reasons why and what this judge did in, in, in the, your case that if he shows that he should not be on your case, you can file and ask him to recuse himself on that. Now, here's the thing about that. Will he? There's a decision to make. He may not. He may not recuse himself because he may not feel that he is a problem. And he may write. And then you get lucky once in a blue moon and someone says, you know what? I'm recusing myself. I'm out of here. But then he may not. And it may cause you more problems because now he's really ticked off. I, I hate to say that because I have went up against that. I, I'm a I'm a recusal type of person. I think I probably recused about four or five judges off and I got him off. But there's remedies to that, people. Because if he doesn't want to get off, then there's other things that you can do to try to get him off your case. Why? Because he's taking things personal and he's not helping you. He's still a human being. We have identified that. I just hope that any judge out there is listening to the fact that if you're that person, be bigger person and get off the case because you're taking things personal when this person just want their case resolved with an open eye of fairness. Do you have anything to say about that, Kristen? Yes, definitely. So there are remedies where a judge can be changed. For example, at the beginning of a case, Mm -hmm. uh, or at the beginning of a modification or something in a family law case, if you do it within a certain number of days, you can do that without even giving a reason. Uh, and you, some, there's limitations on what you can, how many times you can do that, but that's something you can do. As far as recusing for the reasons you're talking about, there, that is, a, I want to explain to people, that is an extreme, and it's a rarity, but it, it absolutely has had. It's happened to you. I've seen it happen. I've been in cases. Uh, you can read publicly about some cases where that's happened even recently, if people want to look that up online without going to any specifics. But yes, there are times when it's so extreme that somebody may feel that they need to ask for that. And if it doesn't happen, then the remedy, they have to wait and through the Court of Appeals and see what the Court of Appeals says. And if the Court of Appeals agrees, they can actually you know, all right, we're going to sign a different person. You're going to go back and relitigate some of these things. And it, it's I, one of my favorite judges, and I'm not going to say who it is, but this particular judge, it was small, small town, very experienced, very down to earth, but would have a lot of cases because it was a small town where that judge would know so-and-so or know so-and-so. And they would say, well, I, I know you from whatever the, Boy Scouts or, you know, church or whatever. And are you okay with me being on the case? And people would say yes. But the second somebody would say, I'm not comfortable, even if it wasn't one of the bases for actually recusing them off of the case, that particular judge would say, I'm off. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to give the appearance to anybody if they're uncomfortable and, and would do that. And I really respected that particular judge for that, because that's what I feel about yeah. this process in general for anybody is that you want to have that feeling that no matter what the outcome is, if you agree or disagree, that the judge will listen to you. The judge took in the information fairly. You may not agree with the outcome and you're going to maybe have some complaints and tell your attorney, ah, I don't like that judge. And But if they really actually listen to everything and that is the outcome, that is the outcome. Uh, and then you have your other remedies, so long as it wasn't filtered through an obvious bias that prevented somebody from giving a fair and impartial decision. Impartiality, that's the key. That is the key. That's the magic word. That's what not only do we want a, a judge to have, but we want to give the appearance of that. And, and holding off on your natural biases is, is difficult. We're human. Just like in a, a jury, we ask them to hold off on their biases. You can do it to a degree. 
you still have to keep your common sense because that can be a bias as well. You know, how you view this, how you view that. But it, it's that whole idea that you may put forth all these arguments and no matter what you said, it wasn't heard. And that's a feeling you don't want. That's where people feel that there is an abuse of power and, and, and deception because when that happens, you could stand there and do nothing and you're still going to have this horrible outcome that you don't deserve. And that's not what our system is meant to do. Mm -mm. You know what? And you're right. And I had to find out the hard way. Okay. <laughs> and I have to say that. <laughs> because of that process. What would you say? Ham? Oh, I'm sorry. You said you became a victim of that process along the way. So not exactly. only were you going through a very difficult time in your life, as we talked about before, when that happens, but then... Right you're looking for some sort of relief, some sort of remedy, and you feel like you, you aren't getting a, an impartial look through the microscope at this, then you become victimized in that sense as well. And so people should speak up about those things because those are injustices that we don't want to happen. They don't happen all the time. You know, just because we are vocal about it doesn't mean that it happens constantly. But when it does happen, something should be done. Exactly. And I believe in sharing is caring. And that's why I'm sharing my story with people, because I'm hoping I get more of a positive reaction that those individuals stop doing it. Those individuals letting people know that person did this, maybe they feel regret and won't do it anymore. So I'm hoping this is a change behavior because that's what we need. Those individuals to realize that's not nice. You destroy families when you take things personal, when it has nothing to do with you. And on that note, I'm going to take a brief commercial and be right back with the Dr. Malika Clary Show on the Bold and Brave TV Network. Be right back, fam. Don't go nowhere. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth, published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back to the Dr. Malika Clary Show on the Bold and Brave TV Network. Yes, welcome back, fam. We are still with the beautiful Kristen, attorney Kristen. Come on in here, girl. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yes, I love it. And before we left, and, you know, I made my spill about, you know, how good and bad. But, you know, one thing I have to say, and I have to bring this up because, you know, as you said, you can, you know, um, call for a special judge. Basically, you can file a motion. Um, but how do you get a special judge? Let me explain on some of that, because 
One thing I, I have realized is that, and I think people don't understand it. This is when I knew there was something wrong with the system or well, this judge particular or whatever, the system, the courtroom that day. Is that when you file a motion, if you look at the trial rules, it, you get 30 to 45 days to answer something. And some, it, yeah, you know, I'm going there. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving the goodies. I'm giving the goodies yeah. because I have to. I have to because people don't understand how to remove a judge. If that, it could be a simple technicality. And you know what? They may be upset. Do your job. Here it is. If 30 days, and if it says on the trial rules, 30 days, they're supposed to answer a motion or do something. When I say they do something, that means that I have to acknowledge it. If it's 45 days, 30 days. Normally it's 30 days, okay? And it depends on the situation, if it's already been ruled on or something or whatever. But they have not. You can file a motion. Now, I think it's called lazy judge motion, but it's not. It's a, a trial number in different I know, huh? That's what people gave it, but I've never seen the lazy name. So they say that I never, I don't know who gave that name, but I've never seen it. Cause I was looking, when I was doing pro se, I was like, where's the lazy judge motion? <laughs> where's the lazy judge motion? And it's not one. It is a number. It's a trial rule. I think in, in Indiana, it might be 53A, 53B, something like that. The, if I'm correct, you see, that's how fresh it's in my mind. Because I, <laughs> damn, I get it. <laughs> because I, I sit there and wait. If you're gonna, if you're not gonna answer my motion, let that one day pass. I'm filing next day. Bam, move. Because why? Because that judge chose to not do his job. Now, if he's gonna be mad or upset or she, because you chose not to do your job, that's on you, buddy. That has nothing to do with the, the plaintiff or defendant. Why? It's because they just follow protocol. You didn't answer the motion. I have had a judge, a couple of judges that left my motion out there over a year. A year, people. So yeah. I have a problem with that. A year. And thinking they were still going to stay on my case. Now I put up with it for a minute till I really started digging in. And if you're upset because I got rid of you, well, you should have been gone. That's all I could tell you. And they did. <laughs> that's part of the movie. Part of the yeah, movie. Fine. Okay, you got something to say. Well, yeah, on, on that lazy judge motion, that, that is a term we see around, but it isn't technically what it's called. But yes, so judges get a certain amount of time uh, to res to answer and to motions. And so, for example, when I said one of those remedies, if you have an opinion from our court order that you feel you have legal grounds to ask them to reconsider or, or to correct an error within that. You file that within 30 days and then the usually the other side gets a chance, usually <laughs> the other side gets a chance to respond and then the judge takes an advisement. And what happens is if that is not replied to within 90 days, that particular order or motion is just deemed denied and then your appellate time starts ticking. But the other thing, if you're within a case, that we just, for example, just trying to get a custody order, trying to get, you know, your final decree of ruling on a contempt hearing. And it's just sitting there and sitting there and sitting there. And I actually have had that happen where it reached an inordinate amount of time, both, but it was an unusual situation. Both the other attorney and I were on the same page with it. <laughs> what, what are we going to do? Are we going to file this motion? And we, you know, we tried other things first before we did that, but it doesn't happen too often. I mean, the judges are, they're overworked. They have so much to do. And so when you get to the, you know, oh, it's been one more day, you know, it, it depends what's going on, but that remedy is there for a reason. If something is really important and you've waited, not only did you wait for the order, but you waited to get into court, you filed a motion, it didn't happen the next day. You know, it's usually months down the road, maybe there was a continuance you know, all that you finally got your hearing done and now you're waiting. And in the meantime, what's happening with the situation? What's happening with the custody? What's going on with the kids? What's going on with all this stuff? It's really important. So you're waiting and it's important to you and can change your life. So yes, that's why it's important. And judges, most of them take it very seriously and that they want to get it done. But that particular motion is there if it is not done in a proper amount of time because they want to move the system forward. So that that is there. And 
and some people can successfully file that and then you know they come in and somebody else has to review that or there's other remedies as, as well that you can deal with that but yeah, the lazy yeah. judge yeah I, people know <laughs> that too they're lazy judge <laughs> and i say that and i say because i never saw it i said no they had me looking for a minute and i was doing massachusetts i was doing indian i said wait a minute where is it and then i come to find out with enough probing there's no name called lazy judge it's trial <laughs> rules i had to read all the trial rules i mean even being paralegal i've seen other things and i worked with a good amount of lawyers and they taught me more not work for them but i did a couple but they actually have just more like my car leads you know what I mean? So they educated right. me. And then I started finding out a lot of stuff. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, this is the motion. And then they have different numbers for different situations. I mean, like I said, I don't want to confuse anybody. So if they do mention within the 30 days, even if they say it's under advisement, that's not considered that they didn't answer you. I want to make sure we're clear on that. Because some people, they might think, oh, they put, yeah. That yeah, I didn't hear. I didn't get a decision in 30 days. No, no, no. You got some type of heads up. I got your information. I got it under advisement. That just that little bit. If he does or she does that little bit, you do not got a 30 days there. Okay, <laughs> that's that's not a 30 days. It's after the fact that there's nothing going on, and they didn't say anything. They just let your case just sit there and sit there. Your motion just rolling off to the next month, rolling off to the next month. No answer. No nothing. Yeah, unless, like Kristen said, if it's a motion to reconsider, there's some things is deemed denied automatically after 45 days or 30 days. Depends what your state is. And on that note, we are going to take a brief commercial and we will be right back with the Dr. Malika Clary Show on the Bold and Brave TV network. Don't go nowhere, fam. We'll be right back. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess them. Welcome back to the Dr. Malika Clary Show on the Bold and Brave TV Network. Well, we're coming live. Welcome back, Kristen. Come on in here, girl. Welcome back, my dear. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. You're <laughs> welcome. You know, it's such a pleasure to always have you on this show. I mean, we we worked so well together, and you're so insightful. I want to say, and informational, and if that's such a word, but I think it is. <laughs> but anyway. <Appreciate> it. <laughs> And I love picking your brain and I, I really do. And I think it's, you know, it's valuable because a lot of people don't know and there's things that they do know they may not know, but we want to give some clarification. And I, it's just wonderful that you agree to be on the show. And like I said, you're just one of those people that you're an advocate, you love helping people and I love helping people and you work well with me. So I appreciate you being a guest on my show again. <laughs> I tell you, I don't even know why I say it again because you know when I pull it in back my pocket and I say, wait, wait, 
Let me get, let me have Chris. <laughs> I want to know some more information. And you know what really gets me is because when there's other emails that I receive, there's so many. And I mean, I can't answer them all. So when I shoot you some questions and stuff, it's because there's other people working through me and asking and it's yeah. helping all these viewers. And I can't believe how many emails and I just, I, I'm, I'm ecstatic that, you know, so, and the, the thank yous that I get that, wow, you, you guys really helped or this. And I mean, seriously, there's some people left. And I, I think on the break, you was talking about, you know, how people feel helpless. And I think that's why we do this. And so you don't feel helpless. You feel like somebody's, you know, want to hear you or someone that just cares, you know, even if my experience, I'm still sharing my experience with you, but I'm also experienced things you do and things you don't do and things how you can do, you know, better and how to, because there's some of you, 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 you know, you may don't have a, a judge that bias. You might be the problem too. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to <laughs> say we're going to get to sometimes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We're going to get to that. We are definitely going to get that because you know, we may run out of time today to talk about all these judicial issues or anything that we're having problems or trying to pro solve problems or even giving you information so you would know something, you know, to be more on your legal um, expertise, you know what I mean? So I think that this was a very good and helpful, you know, um, episode on the judicial system because a lot of people have been looking for it. But I don't want to go ahead and go rambling on because we're going to continue this and I'm going to have attorney Kristen Servet on my show again. And we're going to continue these conversations. We're going to talk about more about the judicial system and how things you do, what things you don't, and maybe you could do something better. Or maybe you don't need to get into the system at all. But we'll talk about all that stuff because this is not going to be our first rodeo with her. Oh no, Chrissy's coming back. <laughs> well, well, I got to say if you're thinking it, other people are thinking it. And the information we can give, if you find it helpful, so are a lot of other people. And I'm glad that they're responding to you and finding that this information is helpful. Well, thank you so much. And I'm going to I'm going to say thank you for being a guest on my show. And um, again, thank you, Kristen. And if, and I have to end it like this. If you're looking for Dr. Malika Clary, uh, you can Google me. And, and as well as Kristen is my guest, you can Google her as well, Attorney Kristen Servet. Uh, DrMalikaClary.com is my website. And you can always, you know, check all those social medias. I'm on them all. And um, if I haven't said it to you, I thank you. And I thank you very much for tuning in. And I love you, your mind and your body and your soul. And I think that anybody can change something to a positive. Positive psychology is what we need. Enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of the week to come. Enjoy. Thank you. I love you. Bye. You've been watching the Dr. Malika Clary Show. Tune in next week as Dr. Malika will help you shift towards a better life. But this show doesn't stop there. She'll provide helpful tips regarding surviving the entertainment industry and the judicial system with practical information. Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern, here on the Bold Brave TV Network.